There's been a lot of stories this week about how Chinese scientists have managed to crack military-grade encryption, specifically RSA, with a quantum computer. And naturally, this has a lot of people concerned that all of their online data and search history could be compromised any day now, not to mention state secrets, launch codes, stuff like that, because RSA is still used for a large amount of the asymmetric encryption on the web. Now, some of the news outlets that have spread this panic actually link back to the scientific paper that was published in the Chinese Journal of Computers, which of course is mostly written in Chinese, but luckily the abstract here is written in fairly plain English. And it tells us here that the D-Wave quantum annealing devices that were used in this experiment were able to successfully factorize the integer 2,269,753. Now these results apparently surpass prior records from other laboratories that were using quantum computers to factor large numbers, but this is still a very, very long way off from actually breaking any relevant RSA keys. So the D-Wave machines that were used in this case were only able to factor a 22-bit number. And even if we look into the very early days of RSA's conception, the recommended key size was 512 bits in length. And since about 2015, the recommended key size has been 2,048 bits in length, and some people even use 4,096-bit RSA keys. Now, obviously, the larger the key size used for the encryption, the more difficult it's going to be to break, at least to reverse it in the same way that these computers are doing. And the factoring problem that RSA relies on is also one that can't just be broken up and distributed to say, a hundred different D-Wave quantum annealing devices that can each factor a 22-bit number just to combine the results at the end into breaking a much larger key size that people actually use. No, it's not that simple. You can't just throw a massive swarm of cheap quantum computers at this problem. So not only are quantum computers at present time far off from breaking RSA, but they're still a way off from taking the record for largest number factored from classical computers. So the current record for that as of 2020 was factoring a 250 decimal digit number or an 829 bit number, which took roughly 2700 core years to do this factoring job on using massive compute systems because obviously they didn't just set up a single core two quad to run for several centuries. They were likely using tens of thousands of CPU cores to throw at this problem. So that was still not enough to even break RSA, what would the closest standard be? I guess RSA 1024, which that standard has pretty much been deprecated since 2013. Like, there's nothing relevant that you're going to be able to break with the massive compute system or even with the quantum computers now. And even the hybrid quantum systems, they've only managed to factor up to a 48-bit number last year, which apparently was only possible because the researchers specifically picked a number that was easier to factorize into the two original primes that were multiplied together to create that product. Now, I'm not enough of a math nerd to really understand all the nitty gritty details there as far as picking a number that's easier to factor goes, but I think most of us here know about the trick for multiplying nines. You know, all the numbers can be added together into nine, and so you know something's a multiple of nine. So I'm sure that there's certain numbers that are easier to factor than others using a similar kind of trick. But there's still major issues with diminishing returns that quantum computers need to get over in order to really just scale effectively. I mean, forget trying to break encryption and trying to do any spe solve any specific problem with a quantum computer. Just to scale effectively, uh, they have to get over the qubit problem. So the qubits 
And quantum computers are extremely sensitive to outside disturbances. And this is part of the reason why quantum computers are kept very cold, down to just a few millikelvin when they're running. And this is to basically freeze out as much random noise as possible. In fact, a significant portion of the hardware that you're looking at whenever you see those giant, like, golden quantum computers, most of that is just for achieving the near absolute zero refrigeration that those things need to run. So keep that in mind the next time you think that your desktop cooler or radiator is too big. But despite all that cooling and all that noise isolation, in order to actually get accurate readings from quantum computers that can be useful, the majority of their qubits have to be dedicated to error correction. A single high quality logical qubit might require 100 to 1000 physical qubits in order to actually be logical. And this is why the D-Wave 2000 that was used in these most recent factoring experiments where people are saying the Chinese broke encryption, despite that machine having 2000 qubits on board, which theoretically would have more computational states than there are particles in the universe, which probably means that something like RSA 4096 would be a piece of cake for it to break, that fancy machine was still only able to factor a relatively small 22-bit number. And my understanding is that the more qubits that you pack into a given system, the harder it is for this error correction to be done. So unless there is some kind of breakthrough here, I don't think quantum computers are going to become a threat to RSA for many decades, long after everyone currently using these vulnerable encryption schemes is gone. But the distant timeline that myself and other people are putting on quantum supremacy still reminds me of the predictions that people were making about flight in the early years of the 20th century. In December 1903, just a few days before the Wright brothers' first heavier-than-air flight, there was an editorial posted in the New York Times that claimed it would take 1 to 10 million years until mankind would be able to fly. Then, less than 70 years after that editorial, mankind took their first steps on the moon. Even though quantum computers have these serious issues with error correction right now, there always could be something that some genius figures out to make them work a whole lot better and make the timeline a whole lot faster. And even though quantum computers can't break encryption right now, governments around the world are still collecting large quantities of encrypted data in the hopes that they can crack it in the future. This concept is known as store now, decrypt later, and even if the timeline to decrypt this data that's stored does end up taking 100 plus years, some of the decrypted data, like locations of missile silos or other strategic military installations, could still remain relevant when quantum supremacy does finally occur. And this is why there's been a big push over the last few years for quantum resistant encryption algorithms to start being used. And luckily, they've already been integrated into popular messaging applications like Signal and iMessage. Both of them are currently using Kyber, which NIST announced as the winner of their six-year post-quantum encryption competition. Kyber also has the advantage of needing much smaller key sizes compared to RSA. Kyber 512 is supposed to be as secure as AES-128, and Kyber 1024, meaning a 1024-bit key, is supposed to be as secure as AES-256. There's also efforts by Open Quantum Safe to enable quantum-resistant cryptography in OpenSSL for quantum-resistant HTTPS, which makes up the bulk of the traffic that goes over the internet. Companies like Cloudflare that also handle encryption for about 19% of all websites, at least according to their statistics back in 2021, also provides post-quantum encryption as a beta feature on their platform, which as of last March, 2% of their customers are using. So the way I see it, the threat of quantum computers will mostly be mitigated before they even become a problem. I'd expect a good portion of systems to start migrating to quantum resistant encryption algorithms within the next 10 to 20 years. But tell me your thoughts in the comments below about the ongoing battle between post quantum encryption and the ongoing development of devices that can break the encryption. 
like and share this video to hack the algorithm, and buy some merch from my website, base.win, where you can save 10% off your entire order at checkout when using Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.